Hey there. So the purpose of this video is to show how you might be able to adapt the an oil press or any other kind of rotating um, device to the back of a bike. And I did this because originally I had made a device which pedaled um, an oil press, but it uh, I had to compromise the bike. I had to take out the rear wheel or the spokes rather and modify it and uh, attach it to wood. So what I've done here differently is to create a kind of modular form that can be added on to any bike, generally of most sizes or shapes. And the purpose of this is simply that you can keep your bike as one piece, mount it onto this device and use it to press oil or um, whatever else you can get creative with. Um, the general feature here is this wooden frame which is which makes a tripod um, it's simple to make um, the straps are there to put to hold tension um, and the pipe is there to support the rear of the bike which is held up right here by the seat stays um, so it keeps the bike's tire off the ground and allows that the chain be run independent of the regular bike chain um, on the smallest gear down there and the other chain continues to use the same derailleur and is able to shift um, so in essence it's a form which can be modified or um, taken to any different type of bike um, road bike mountain bike um, when you put it on the bike You'll be able to adjust the height of the legs by tightening or loosening the straps. Um, these are a type of strap that have a push button and a locking mechanism. So you push here and it releases the strap. Um, these are the same, of course. And um, yeah, watch the rest of the video if you're interested and I'll show you how to put together something really briefly, simple. Um, it's, you know, I'm not going to explain everything, but I'm going to give a pretty good outline for how you might do something this this nature yourself. Okay, so what I was gonna show is how to take it apart. Um, first things first, this tensioner comes off and then the chain is slack. And then if you pull the chain off and undo the rear wheel, that the rear wheel is down you can pull the chain off of the wheel and the loop comes up um, so the way to disassemble it is just to loosen all of the straps um, if I if I pull these straps off the sides the bike comes down to the ground and then I can undo these straps here Basically, separate it like this, and pull the straps off of the seat. Now the bike is free from the device. So this simply slides off. The bottom of the feet are beveled to sit on the ground um, at an angle and then I pinned the back of the strap with a screw and a washer. Um, these straps here are 12 feet long um, which is about four meters and these straps here are six feet long two meter straps. Okay so this is how you mount it onto the bike. First, these loops here go around. And this fits. 
fits over the seat like that. And let it drag forward. And then these straps here go around the seat stay with the bike. here There's one There's the other And then as I tighten the green straps the rear wheel starts to lift off the ground. Okay, now I've got to put the chain on now that I've got the bike mounted and the um, press on. So, drop the rear wheel. to the smallest gear, bring it up, replace the bike wheel, and now this chain gets placed on the gear and then the chain tensioner here gets slipped back on here and put back in place okay so it takes a little bit of time to kind of play with the straps um, and I had to slide the press further back compared to the other bike um, to shorten the chain um, it's bolted under here so it can just kind of slide forward and back according to how long you need it to be for the chain. Um, now I'm going to hop on here and just demonstrate the I can shift gears in front to make it go faster. Alright, so I was able to produce some oil, but it was a real slurry. It had a lot of, of particulate mater material, it was like kind of a mash. Um, I think that it'll be um, better if it sits for a little while, and you know, it is a liquid, um, but it might need to be filtered. Not really sure what it'll be good for. Um, it was just an experiment to try the press on. For the chain tensioner, I'm pulling apart um, a five gallon bucket and I'm gonna use the handle metal to run a pulley. Oh, that's hard. I keep moving this pulley wheel, this tensioner, and originally I had it over on this side here, but um, when, the, when the bike pedals, um, the, the chain is tight on, on this side and um, when you put uh, when you put a lot of tension on it, it stresses the tensioner, and ultimately this side should always be a straight line um, with the tension on it, and so the pulley should belong on the back side of um, of the crank here, and so to do that, 
you know, I just kind of bent the wire and tucked it and bent it again. The whole point is that it should have a certain amount of flex to it and give so that when, for example, sorry for the motion, when you sit on the bike, you'll see that there's a certain amount of um, give that the tension, that, that the, the weight pulls the, um, the chain tighter. Now, the press is bolted underneath, like I said, and it can slide forward on the piece of wood here. And when you do so, it effectively brings the gears closer together and the loop of chain um, becomes slack. So depending on what bike you put on, if you change bikes, then the, the whole contraption needs to get either slid this way or brought back to put enough tension onto the chain. Um, all of these straps and chains, everything is, um, in, uh, is uh, it, it's, they're all variable. Um, so everything needs to get tweaked and adjusted kind of continually to get the right alignment of things. Um, the right lengths, the straight lines that allow the bike to sit forward and for the chain to work with the other chain. So I'd like to show how I made the wooden frame. Um, it's really simple and it uses um, a spade bit, which is this shaped bit here to make the holes. I chose this one for the size of this pipe and I chose a smaller one for back here. Um, I'll show you how to use that with the drill and get the frame put together pretty quick. So this is what the spade bit looks like. I'm putting it um, for where the seat post goes, and I'll just show you how quickly it goes. There you have the hole. Now I've got the lines drawn, and the next thing to do is to cut the lines. So that's what that looks like when it's done. Now on the other side of the piece of wood, I've marked where I'm going to drill. This is a little more difficult because you have to get it straight to go all the way through the length of the wood. And so I'll probably drill from both sides and try to meet in the middle. Now, for the cutting of the legs, the angle of the leg backwards is important. Um, I don't know, it's experimental, you get to choose how far back you make it and how tall you make it. Um, I gave you the dimensions earlier and I can write those down. Um, but just in terms of how to make the leg, if you cut a piece of wood with the approximate angle back that gives you this type of slope for the triangle, you cut the bottom at an angle like that. We'll trim the tip off to make the spot where the strap goes so that it pulls straight back up to the frame. And the difficult thing is in making the hole here so that the leg goes both backwards and in this direction outwards. So this is how I made the holes. You can choose to do it however works best. Um, the idea here is that if you choose a distance off of the wall, this will be the angle at which you 
um, make the spread of the legs and um, and if you maintain the distance um, there the angle backwards relative to the ground here um, sorry it's difficult to see in the video um, so what I've done is put the piece of wood in essentially in the, the angles that I would like to see it in the end and then I use the drill to hold straight on this side and drill plumb and level to the wall. Um, I can't quite do that with zero hands, but I'll show you what it would look like. Um, basically you put the drill in here and when you hold the drill, you hold it both so that it's up and down level and side to side straight with the leg being at the angles that it wants to be and just use the wall as a reference. All right, so I'll take you into the shop and I'll show you how I went about making the attachment for the gear onto the spindle. So for a square tapered crank, we have this round hole, this round shaft, and we're gonna try filing it to get it round. Okay, so now the shaft fits inside the crank. And what we need to do is to drill here to create a hole for the pin. Now with the shaft in place to get the hole to go all the way through. So now I gotta cut this arm off because we don't want it rotating while the press is in motion. Okay. So now I'm finding that when I try to put the, the binding pin in, um, it's the gear is in the way and it won't go in straight. Um, so I just have to modify the gear a little bit so that it can squeeze in. Okay. One thing that I forgot to mention while we were in the shop was that I had to remove the crank arm and take a chunk of it out so that it would clear the screw here on the inside. Um, I used an angle grinder for that. Uh, you could use a file or a hacksaw to make that cut, um, but I forgot to mention that in the how-to. Well, that's pretty much it. So I hope that this answers some of your questions or at least gives you a start on how to go about doing such a thing. And if you have any questions, you can post them in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. Um, I hope this is a helpful video to people.